Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. So my editor needed a day off, so I'm going to rehash an old episode in a unique way. This is a tale of a 1978 Gibson Les Paul Custom with factory stock chrome hardware. Now this isn't necessarily rare, it actually becomes more common the further you get into the late 70s into the early 80s, but something, you know, around 75, 76, at that point I would say it's a little bit more uncommon. Now whether you think gold or chrome looks better on a guitar, there's an old episode that I did showing them side by side. A lot of people find that the chrome is understated but brings out the rest of the finish so much more, and you get the benefit of not having to worry about the gold wiping off the pickup covers. But the story of this guitar, five years ago, somebody who had a not so promising outlook on his life expectancy according to his doctor, wanted to seek out one of these these exactly spec'd guitars. So I tried to help them to the best of my ability. But just as forewarning, that's not a service I'm able to offer anymore. I made this video to help you with that. And after weighing some options of, you know, modifying one, because again, time was short, he wanted it as soon as possible, the question came up, how can you tell a guitar is factory chrome? Well, there's a few things. Usually when people do the conversion jobs, they do not take the time to swap out the jack plate. Out of sight, out of mind, most people forget it. But the second area that unless you're a professional that you're not really gonna change out are the studs to the Nashville style bridge. And why is that? It's because it requires a special tool to remove or at least a little bit of specialized knowledge. Your average Joe isn't going to pull them out and then install other studs. Usually if you look right under there and if they're gold and everything else is chrome, that's how you know somebody did a modification. The next area to look is the solder work inside of the control cavity. So if that's been messed with, you don't even know those are the original pickups to the guitar. But if everything is good there, then you want to pop your pickups out to see if anybody has messed with the solder work by the covers. Now, as I was just telling you, factory chrome, it's not selling for like huge premiums, but there are some people that prefer it and are looking out for one of those. So you might see a small premium depending on the year of production and the color. Like wine red, you see them quite often. Cherry sunburst, I've only ever seen like a small handful of, and I've only seen like a handful of the tobacco ones. But I've personally not seen a stock chrome white Les Paul Custom from the 70s, early 80s era anyway. But there's kind of an additional fun story behind this one. So not only did he want it to be chrome hardware, but he wanted it to be Tim Shaw PAFs or put a Seymour Duncan in the bridge. Because his initial request was a 78 through about 82 Les Paul Custom because he did not want the visible pancake layer showing. The pancake body existed from 1969 till about 1976. Now, can you sometimes find it as late as 79? Yes, but it's, it transitions away in 76, right? But there's still a hidden layer between the maple top and the mahogany body that people don't talk about as often. So since this particular guitar did not have the Tim Shaw PAFs, we went ahead and ordered that Seymour Duncan. But when I went to make this modification for him, I noticed something very strange with the pickup on this one. So it was dated to March, March 32nd. <laughs> now at first I didn't really think anything of it, whatever, but then, then you think about it, 32nd. There's not 32 days in the month of March. So I thought, huh, that's a weird funky error. Somebody forgot to change the month over on their little stamper machine. But it wasn't until later on when I was chatting with my wife that I, I realized, what is the month that comes after March? It's April. What's another way to say April Fool's Day? March 32nd. <laughs> so most likely this was somebody's idea of an April Fool's joke that just took 40 plus years to surface. That's one of those stories that just stick with you for the rest of your life. And it's one of those tales that I will never forget. And unfortunately, I haven't talked to this buyer ever since. I don't know if he's still with us. I just remember he was fairly young. His family came to me. We met up. It was an in-person deal once I had sourced the guitar. And it was a fun little time. And she had left a nice comment saying this guitar brought him great joy. Now, hopefully, it's still bringing him great joy. But that is the story behind this particular factory chrome 1978 Gibson Les Paul Custom. Now, as far as 78 customs go, what else can I tell you about them? Well, they come stock with the T-top pickup, so that's what we're talking about here. The reflector knobs on this one, I mean, it's kind of a transitional era. 
but you for sure find those in 76 and a little bit in 77. By 78, they do start to transition into the speed knobs. And then we just kind of keep those for the rest of the New Orleans era because that's technically where we are. But it features a three-piece maple neck in this era. You gotta remember around 75, they transitioned into the maple from the three pieces of mahogany. And they just have really cool headstocks to them, ebony fretboards with the low wide style frets, not fretless wonders. Those are low skinny frets. These are still wide, but still low. So maybe not the best for super crazy bends, but you know, they're, they're all right. You get used to them the more you play. But as far as your body's constructed, it's solid mahogany yet. It's not till 1982 that they start the whole nine hole weight relief. Not that it really matters in this era. <laughs> It's always fun talking to people about their mid-80s guitar, and they're like, oh yeah, heavy boat anchor, but at least no weight relief, right? Nah, sorry, not, not after 82. That's when they start to do that. That's also when, like, the volutes start to disappear. You can also start to see some of the fun, like, flip-out winding tuners. Tim Shaw PAF start to transition into the customs in, in mid the year 1980. But you also have things like the three-point top adjust bridge, posi lock starting to come out around the 82-83 transitional period. Now, these New Orleans era customs are a lot of fun. They birthed a lot of classic rock and roll, as did the 50s and 60s models. And they've gone up a lot in value. I think when we were buying this, that was back when New Orleans customs were between two and 4,000. And 4K was bringing you home a minty, fresh under the bed kept no blemishes type example nowadays you know something like that can fetch eight to ten grand but it takes a special example depending on color because like in 78 you get the introduction of the silver burst les paul customs and you know thanks to adam jones those things are really expensive now and not just adam uh, other players as well but since gibson gave him an official platform of a signature model that's what they needed to really jump over the top well, that's enough fun ramblings. Let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds with stock pickups.
hope you enjoyed this kind of impromptu just talking you through an old guitar. We will catch you guys tomorrow with our regularly scheduled content. Take care.